Hey everybody, this is Tad on the Dadcraft server. And that is a map of my witchy farm. And I'm going to give a little tour today of the witch farm and some of the different things that are going on here and kind of an instructional video for some of the other dad crafters too to see how some of this stuff is used. I got a big brewing potion machine and I want everyone to kind of have a good understanding of how to use it if they want to come over here and use it and uh, or they could just take some of the stuff I've already made. Well let's get to it. All right um, well right here is the map uh, the big diamond shape with the green square around it is the actual witch farm itself and uh, but I'll go to each one of these little um, connecting things in a little bit this is just my main storage room right here to begin with and um, the nether portal this will is where most people will arrive but I will start with the witch hut itself let me go get an invisible not an invisibility, but a night vision potion. Let's see, do I have one here? Water breathing, night vision. Okay, get one of those and drink that down. That way we can see in the dark. How about that? Okay, so right now no one else is on the server, so we will have good spawn rates over here. As you can see, I have um, a flushing mechanism that pushes these guys off of a, the spawning pads. And um, I have a redstone clock set up right over here. Um, you can kind of see this piece of sand, see how it dropped? Well there is a, a redstone clock right over there and it will send uh, two, pulse, two pulses um, to the, um, the dispensers there that have water in them. And here in a second you'll see, all, look at all those witches. That's a pretty good amount. See, there went one tick, and then all of a sudden that redstone will send a second tick to turn it off. And that's the flushing. And then, hey, right away, they, they're more start uh, showing up. They fall down to their death down there, and all their items uh, get sent up this item elevator right here. So they, um, they just they come on up. It looks like magic, but I guess this is a witch farm. Uh, they come on up and get... Uh, forced into that water stream which gets sent into this uh, item sorter here so we can get all their good drops got a whole lot of each of these here uh, and this is kind of all for the taking anyone that needs to use these for building supplies or any any other kind of crafting we have a lot doc uh, doc likes to call this instead of the witch farm he likes to call this tad's stick farm because that is the number one thing that I get the most um, being produced here is sticks. But since I had these main um, ingredients for potions, I decided to make a big automatic brewer. So, uh, look at this rain. Rain, rain, go away. Um, but I have this big automatic brewer, which I got the design from Tango Tech. He's one of the Hermitcraft uh, guys, and he, um, he has a tutorial on YouTube. To how to build this big thing. It's kind of a big monstrosity. It has a lot of uh, redstone behind it. I'm not going to uh, try to explain any of that redstone that's inside this whole back area here, but um, we have dispensers here set up with each of the ingredients. And you can tell, um, you know, puffer fish, of course, for water breathing potions, fermented spider eye for reversing or changing a potion, and then the durations or the level two or the splash potion ingredients. Uh, we always do those at the tail end to change the final aspect of a, a potion. Uh, of course, the number one thing is this very first one, the nether wart. Um, now I will show you all how this kind of works. Um, the indicator lights above each of the ingredients will be lit if we have those ingredients available. Um, as you can tell, the puffer fish, we have some puffer fish in the dropper. But over here, uh, we do not have any of the rabbit's feet, so that indicator lights off, so we can't do any leaping potions. Um, but let's, I'm going to go ahead and make some speed potions, um, so we have plenty of those. And uh, let's see, I will make them level 2 potions, so, and I'll make them splash potions. So, in order to make this, this setup and to brew it, you just uh, flick the lever down on the ingredients that you need. 
of course, uh, you need to always start with another wart. Um, that is the number one requirement for um, for doing any of these. You have to make that awkward potion and then put all the, the secondary and tertiary ingredients in there. Uh, up at the very top is our water bottles. Make sure that this is full. Um, and this is what what we call a, uh, or what I call a multi-batch brewer. Uh, as soon as you turn this thing on, I have a lever right here, brewing off, brewing on. Once you turn it on, it will just continue to make batch after batch and just put them into this bottom chest down here. Uh, that's the output chest. I guess I probably need to put a little sign down there, output. Um, this is just extra storage for empty water bottles. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn this on, and you'll hear a, a chime that will indicate that the first brewing uh, batch has started. And then you hear that chime, and then, so now the first batch has started. Now, uh, it will chime again as soon as the second batch starts. So let's come on ahead and jump up here. This pressure plate opens up this little window, viewing window, so you can see the actual brewer itself. And so here you got the water bottles, you got the nether wart already being dumped in. And okay, so that one, the first step is done, and now the secondary ingredient is being thrown in sugar. And let's see, I can actually click on this hopper right up here, and you can see how the other uh, ingredients have just been lined up and they're ready to go into that dispense or be dispensed down into this brewer, brewing stand right here. And all right, there goes the second one, the glowstone dust, and that's going to make this a speed two potion. And then once this is done, then um, you'll be able to see the next one going on, which will be the gunpowder, which will make this a splash potion. All right, so there that went. Now we're going to be doing a splash potion. Okay, so I, I jump off of that, and uh, you know it automatically closes up. Uh, of course, this water block right here is for filling up. These, oh, go ahead and get that in here. Oop. Filling up these so you know you can easily have access to water and fill up your water bottles. And we sh All right, did you hear that? The second batch started going. So go up here and we can see that okay, now we have new water bottles, new nether wart coming in, and it's just going to be an automatic process where it will continue to make speed to. Uh, potions, splash potions, until these ingredients run out. Uh, it actually will shut down if any of these uh, four ingredients are not uh, are no longer available. So, and right down here are the speed two splash potions that we just made. Now, if you want to stop this and okay, you only want to make two batches, just turn this off, and it will continue to finish this batch right here. This uh, one that we're doing and deposit them down there and it will stop the whole process. So that's kind of an easy, um, if you just want one batch of like strength potions with uh, using this blaze powder, set up your, your recipe the way you want it with the splash potion or, ex or extending duration or whatever you want and then turn this on, wait for the chime and then turn it right back off and it will do just one batch. So that's kind of how how you use this thing. Now if you're lazy and you just like, I want some potions but I don't know how to use this crazy thing, well this is what I've set up for you. We have all of these potions available. Uh, all you gotta do is walk up to this and hit the button and it will dispense it into your onto the ground and into your inventory. So this is a water breathing, this is a night vision and I have the eight minutes uh, or the duration of it uh, tagged onto the image so you can see or uh, item name so you can see what these are. This is invisibility for eight, fire resist for eight, speed one for eight, speed two for 130, uh, slowness for, um, and this is a splash potion because most of the time you want to throw this at someone. You don't want to drink it yourself, but slowness for three, uh, jump boost for one, um, and I, I'm going to be getting jump boost two over there uh, after I get some more rabbit feet. Over here we got weakness three. Usually you want to use these guys for uh, converting uh, uh, zombie villagers into villagers. And then we have strength two, strength one, harming two, poison two, poison one, regen two, regen one, and healing two with four hearts. I didn't think of doing any of the healing ones because I mean 
when you have access to this much stuff, why don't you just have twos? But anyway, you can come over here and get some of those dispensed to you. Now, if you are wanting, let's see, let's get some, uh, let's get some more night potions or night visions here. All right, one, two. Uh, I'll take just one. How about that? And then what is this? Invisibility. Let's get one of those. Okay, so if you have some of these and you want to actually make them a splash potion, I have another. Like you have this night vision, this water breathing, and invisibility, and you and someone else want to go do something, and you don't want to. Uh, you both want to use the effects off the potions. Well, I have this splash potion machine over here. This is real simple. All you have to do is put your regular potions in here that you want to create and turn into splash potions. Let's see, we'll put a fire resist. Uh, actually, let's just do three. It'll do three at a time, but you can do five if you wanted to or whatever. But, uh, second, you flip this switch down. There's no audio indicator or anything like that on this, so it's just going to uh, take whatever you put in this top and convert it into a um, into a splash potion. And uh, after uh, 30 seconds or so, they show up down here. Maybe 40 seconds. I don't know what the total time is, but I know they get dispensed down into here after they go through the process of um, of having the gunpowder apply to them. Now, if you, there's a little bit, bit of a trick. You could actually look at this. If you point your mouse right here, you can actually see... Uh, all right, they're sitting there. They're waiting. They've already been made, uh, so they're actually waiting to be dispensed. Uh, and we can flip that up to turn it off. Bottom line, all you have to do to get this sucker to work is put your potions up here and flip that down and your splash potions will end up down here. And then just be sure to flip that back up whenever you're done with it. And it looks like I have a couple extra splash potions in my inventory. Well, let's continue on with the tour. We'll go on uh, over here. I have automatic farms for just about every, uh, well, everything that I can farm so far for the ingredients that go inside this brewer. The first farm I built was that very tall tower right there that goes up to, I think, 45 levels. Yeah, it's 45 levels, and this is the mushroom farm. So this will uh, just continue to uh, drop mushrooms down in here as, as long as uh, this chunk is loaded, as long as someone's here in this area. And the second farm I built was this one. And it's the same type of setup, but it is actually for melons. Uh, watermelons, it'll grow watermelons. And then once a day, actually this one and the other one is set up on a, a clock, or not a clock, a uh, daylight sensor. So once a day, uh, this will go ahead and send a signal to activate these pistons, which uh, will... Uh, pretty much harvest the melons. I have four melon plants on two different levels, so that's a total of eight plants. And uh, usually within a uh, one day cycle, half or maybe a little more than half of them actually grow melons, and that's what's harvest harvested every day. Over here, you know, I have like 45 levels, and there's a seed mushroom on every level, and it's all just completely dark in there, and uh, it's dispensed with water. Uh, let me see, I think I can get to it from back here where you can see the back side and the, all the dispensers that I have to dispense the water. All the way up, I have one corner of dispensers and there's just a torch tower that runs on up and dispenses water and it gets flushed over to the other side which will be uh, deposited right there in that chest. Let's see, the next farm I built was the nether wart farm. And this is right here. We have one, two, three, four levels of a nether wart growing. And uh, we have a harvesting, a water harvesting mechanism that will harvest these. Uh, it's right here. You just hit that button and uh, you can actually go up and see what's going on here. you got dispensers that dispense water uh, and just flush those guys out. It goes all the way down to the bottom floor, zigzagging back and forth and back and forth, and just kind of pushes these guys down all the way into some hoppers at the bottom row. 
and uh, that are under these half slabs right here. I got some, see there one goes, boom, oh, they just disappear. It looks like they're going into nowhere land. Uh, but they're being dispensed into these hoppers that are down under here, and they just go right into this area here. I'm going to grab a few of these for replanting. And you have to let it run for a little while because soul sand slows everything down. It slows down the track, the speed at which items uh, can travel across it, and, you know, even whenever you're walking across it, it slows you down quite a bit. But I have a couple extra buttons here that I can uh, use to turn off this water, like this one right here. And then it's a matter of manually going through here and re planting everything. So I'll go ahead and speed that up right now. And so that is the nether wart farm. The next one I set up was the bunny blender. Okay, I got this uh, design from Generic B off of uh, YouTube. He had a tutorial on how to set up this uh, bunny cooker, crusher, um, but I didn't actually do the cooker part. I Because all I'm concerned with here is trying to get the rabbit's feet, so I didn't want to um, cook them or anything like that and potentially burn them up so I'm trying to hit them I think uh, in order to get the rabbit's feet since it's a rare drop you actually have to punch them in order to to get them you can't use mechanisms to kill them um, you have to punch them or use a sword and so what I have is uh, seed bunnies up in the top and uh, I can breed them just by hitting that button and going up there and breeding, breeding them uh, but then they, their babies just drop around this fence post down into the bottom, and then you can see these right here full grown. Uh, and they're completely enclosed, but I have this lever here that where I can see their feet. But you only want to open this after they've grown up, because the little babies, they can actually walk out through the bottom here and get out if you open it up. But I have a crusher here. It crushes them just for the right amount of time where you can get down in here and start punching their feet. Now I use a looting three to try to up my chances of, of getting rabbit's feet. Let's see if I get one in this round. And I try to do a jumping hit in order to um, get that critical hit. I don't know if that makes a uh, change or makes the your chances greater to get rare drops. I, I always feel like it does, but I don't know if it does or not. And right there. Okay, Laura joined. Okay, Laura. All right. And then let's see, did I get one? Oh, I got one. All right. Rabbit's foot. Looks like I can make some more leaping potions. Oh, and I got another one that dropped in there. Cool. I got two. All right. So awesome. I'll go ahead and put their drops in here. And what, what do you see down here? Dandelions. Um, I realized that you could, uh, I learned that you could breed these uh, jokers with dandelions. So uh, I'm going to show you that next. But I'll go ahead and breed these guys up before I leave. Just get up here. I have a post right here that helps you not fall in. So that is really a bummer whenever you, you're trying to breed something like this and you fall in the hole that they're all in and then you know, you're in there with them all and you can't get out. If you don't have any ender pearls to pearl out, then you're kind of stuck. But uh, that's my little mechanism to prevent me from falling in. So anyone that comes here, whatever you do, do not remove that pole because um, I'd never even think about it. I just always get up here and walk right into it. And if the pole wasn't there, I would be down in the hole. So if anyone pranks me, um, I'm going to come for you. See, let's use up all of these. Greet up the bunnies. All 
All right, so that's it on the breeding. I usually try to breed a whole snack of 64 um, ba -da -ba -da dandelions. And so then I had to figure out a way of getting dandelions. So I actually set up a uh, fully automatic um, dandelion farm over here. Uh, I didn't really want to set up, you know, go through the trouble of getting a villager to set up a carrot farm, an automatic carrot farm, so I just came up with some redstone and, uh, and came up with a way to get some dandelions growing. Now, what I have here is a growing area. This is my little growing field. That's a dispenser that is loaded with bone meal. I have a some chest right over here that I just have completely loaded with bone meal. And I have a redstone circuit that will send a pulse to this bone meal, multiple pulses. It will like spam this whole area until it grows with grass and different kinds of flowers and uh, mainly the damaged lines is what I'm looking for. And then every, then it'll stop bone mealing after you know four or five hits of that and then it will dispense water out of these dispensers here and harvest it all. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. You can see what it looks like. And here we got the, the dandelions growing. We got some whatever those red things are growing. What are those red things called? Poppies. We got some poppies growing. And they get washed over here up the cool item elevator and into the sorter that will just sort out just these dandelions. So here is where I get all of my feed for my rabbits. Breeding the rabbits and all the other stuff just kind of gets dumped over here and I sort it out manually later but this is really what I'm going for. So there's my dandelion farm for rabbit food. And uh, this just kind of goes over and over. I have a couple redstone clocks. You can kind of hear it's a little bit noisy with the pistons down below that uh, send the signal. Uh, but I have a redstone clock that will make a cycle, go from one circuit to the other. So right now it's on the bottom circuit, spamming the bone meal, then it cuts off, and now the other circuit sends one pulse to turn on the water, and it washes, and then another secondary pulse to shut off the water, and then it starts bone mealing again. So it's just on a completely repeating cycle, and everything washes down this little canal, and goes down that canal, and right up there into that canal and I could have done this probably a lot simpler but I like the visual of the uh, of just the waterways item elevator and um, you know I could easily just grow carrots and do it all manually but I like automating stuff in my hand. and just turn it off and that'll be the last one through and I'll just send the stuff to the oh I guess that one's going to hang out there but that's okay one vanity line waste is not bad when you got all that in storage. The last farm I have is really not an automatic farm by any means, but it's uh, an area where I can um, grow some some trees and be able to get some of the wood. I mean, you can tell that I use quite a bit of spruce wood to build everything out here. My model for all of my builds here was the actual original witch hut that was here to begin with. These oak uprights and the spruce planks is how the original um, witch hut looked and uh, I kind of continued that theme now. Over here I think I have spruce uprights and oak but all the other builds that I have over here kind of model the original, uh, original witch hut. And let's see, over here all I do for this farm is plant my big trees, or uh, it doesn't have to be the big trees, it could be small ones also. Uh, just kind of spam them with the bone meal until they grow up, and they grow up big and tall. And usually I ender pearl, let's see if I can yeah, get up on top of them. And once I'm up here, I'm going to just chop my way back down. So this is kind of my farm. And any of the saplings or or um, logs that get stuck up there, log chunks, uh, eventually when they decay, they fall down, fall into those water streams, which will then 
<clears throat> go through some hopper chains over into the chest that I have down there. So I kind of got this idea from Mumbo Jumbo's tree farm that he has on the Hermitcraft server, but he had all hopper chains, and I decided to go a little bit lighter on the hoppers and not use all up all the iron, and I just have um, these water streams in the in the drop areas where w once the stuff drops, they'll hit these water streams and then go into the center chain of hoppers and get fed right down into here. So that should just load up with uh, that stuff. And those are the only three trees that have really been growing out here, but that whole thing. Now every once in a while I'll lose, you know, an item or two that lands on that pad, but that's that's not bad. That's not so much of a loss. Oh, we got us a little hinder dude. All right, well that concludes the tour of the witchy farm with the Bruin station and all the other things. If you have any questions or you want to contact me about how some things are built specifically and I can point you to the right tutorials for it, just let me know down in the comments. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.